the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, man, that is interesting about scientists, right? They're just concentrating on the task at hand. Yeah. I mean, wasn't that, that was like one of the big concerns about the Manhattan Project, right? Yeah. This is the task. The task is how do you yeah. figure out how to do it? So they figure out how yeah. to do it, not the yeah. eventual in yes. consequence. So when Robert Oppenheimer, um, who was the, the lead of the, of the Manhattan Project, when that first bomb went off, I mean, he has his yeah. his famous quote. The in, 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 Gita. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the the the, the uh, co English common translation was "Holy shit, what yeah. have we done?" Yeah, and and that's and this science is real, but it's not going to be. It's not one person doing it. I mean, mm. th that's the whole like science has been diffused at least with with nuclear power. It was a relatively small number of people, and it was a you know, one or two states that could do it. Now with with precision gene editing, I mean, you get the Nobel Prize for uh, for figuring out how to do. You will get the Nobel Prize for figuring out how to do CRISPR gene edits. But to apply it once the formula already exists, you get like an A minus in your high school biology class. So this technology is out there. It's cheap. It's accessible. Did you go to that 2045 conference in Manhattan a couple of years back? Did no. You, do you know about all that 2045? That's, that's part of the thing with these transhumanist folks. Right. They believe that with their own calculations of the exponential increase sure. of technology, that somewhere around 2045. There's a singularity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, we're, it, at the very least, we're going to reach this point where you're going to be able to either download consciousness right. or have some sort of right. an artificially intelligent sentient right. being that's hanging out with you. Yeah, so, so I'm involved, I'm on faculty for um, one of the programs of Singularity University called Exponential Medicine. And so we're thinking a mm. lot about that. I actually had a, an editor on the New York Times a few weeks ago imagining a visit to a fertility clinic in the year 2045. And again, because we're on this exponential change, it's, it's really hard for people to, to internalize, to kind of feel how fast these changes are coming. I do think, though, uh, Ray Kurzweil, who's, who's a really incredible genius, he thinks that we are soon going to get to a point um, where our artificial intelligence is self-learning. Because when you think about it, AI, if it gets to the point where it can read something, read and comprehend, like in seconds, it will read every book ever written in human yeah. history. And then it's just, it, it, when you have all these doublings and all this more knowledge, you can imagine how that would happen pretty quickly. The, the counter argument against, and I think that it, it will, but I don't think that, we're, that, that our human brains are, on one hand, they're incredibly complex. And they're also kind of irrational. I mean, we have all these different layers. Mm. We have our lizard brain and every decision that we make, there's the rational decision. But then there's all the other stuff that our brains that doesn't even rise to the level of our awareness that our, that our brains are, are processing. And right now, we only really have one really effective artificial intelligence algorithm, which is for pattern recognition. But you think, if you think of pattern recognition as a core skill of what our brains do, our brains probably have 1,000, 2,000 different skills. Um, but the core thing is whether we reach this singularity moment or not these technologies are going to become incredibly more powerful. They're going to become increasingly integrated into our lives and into our beings and part of our evolutionary process. There's no longer, oh, we just have our biological evolution and our technological evolution, and those are separate things. They're connected. It's going to be that weird question of whether or not if, if an artificial intelligence is going to be able to absorb all of the writing that human beings have ever done and really right. understand us, yeah. will they really still be able to understand us just because they get all the writing? So right now, you would say no. I'd say no, yeah. But 20 years from now, 50 years but from now, 100 years from now? They could come up with a reasonable facsimile. I mean, yeah. they could figure out a way to get it close enough. Yeah. You I know, think that, where it's yeah. like her, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's an es essential point because I think when people imagine this AI future, they're imagining like some intimate relationship with some artificial intellig intelligence that feels just like a human. I don't yeah. think that's going to happen because it's, it's- You don't? Well, no, but just because AI, it will be its own form of intelligence. And it may not be, like, frankly, we wouldn't want AIs with these brains like we have that have all these different impulses that are kind of imagining all this, this crazy stuff where we may want them to be more rational than, than we are. So like you know, chimpanzees are our close relatives. They don't think just like us. We're not, you know, we're not expecting them to think like us. They're their own thing. And I think mm -hmm. AIs will be their own things. Will we be interacting with them? Will we be having sex with them? Yes, 
but if they're they're it's not going to be that they're just like us. We're going to they're going to be these things that live within us, live with us, and together we're going to evolve. Well, they're certainly already better at doing certain things like playing yeah. chess. Yeah. I mean, it took a long time for an artificial intelligence to be able to compete against a real chess master, yeah. but now they swamp them. Yeah. So and so, they learn quickly, yeah. like in, incredibly yeah. quickly. They teach themselves. Yeah, so so first we had chess, and chess people said, oh, that's what it means to be a human. The computers will never beat humans at chess. Mm -hmm. Now it's like everyone says, well, no human could ever compete. And then they said, well, there's this Chinese game of Go, which kind of when people here look at it, it looks kind of like checkers, but it's actually way more sophisticated, way more complicated than chess. I heard that there are more moves in Go, more potential right. moves than there are stars in the universe. Yes, yes. So, so then they had AlphaGo, that this, this uh, company, DeepMind, which the, was later acquired by Google, they built this algorithm that in 2016 defeated the world champions of Go. And people thought that was, we were decades away. And then DeepMind created this new program called AlphaZero. And AlphaZero, with AlphaGo, they gave it access to all of the digitized games of Go. So it, it very quickly was able to learn from how everybody else had played Go. AlphaZero, they just said, here are the basic rules of Go. And they let AlphaGo just play against itself with n no other experience other than here are the rules and play against. And in four days, AlphaZero destroyed AlphaGo. And then, Alpha, and then <laughs> AlphaZero destroyed the world champions of chess and destroyed every other computer program that had ever played chess. And this, again, those computer programs had internalized all the chess games of grandmasters. Alpha Zero had not internalized any. It just played against itself for a few days. And then Shogi, which is a Japanese traditional game, kind of like chess, it destroyed the grandmasters of that. So that's what I'm saying is that these, the world is changing. It's changing so much faster than we anticipate. And we have to be as ready for that as we can. I think we need to come to grips with the fact that we're way stupider than we think we are. We, well, we think we're really intelligent, and we are, yeah. in comparison to everything else on this planet. Yeah. But in comparison to what is possible, we are really fucking dumb. In well, comparison to what this computer can yeah. do, and what the, f the future of that computer yeah. is, and what maybe that computer is going to redesign another computer. You know, yeah. you know, this is good, but I've got some, I've got some hiccups here. Yeah. No, it's true. But, and yet the technology is us. Right. Like this it's, sort it's, of. It's, it's not like this technology is some alien force. We've, it's, like this, it's like we create art. We create, we cre yeah, you, you, like you mentioned cities and are like, mm -hmm. we create these cities, which are these incredible places where dreams can happen in yeah. cities like here in Los Angeles or New York, where, where, where I'm from. So this technology is us. And the challenge is how can we make sure that this technology serves our needs yeah. rather than undermines our, our needs? Yeah. And whether or not our needs supersede the needs of the human race or supersedes the needs of the planet. Yeah. It's we're we're almost too much chimp right to, yeah. to contemplate these yeah. critical decisions in terms of like what how it's going to unfold from yeah. here on out yeah I mean, we really might not we but the people that are actually at the tip of the spear of this stuff they really might be affecting the way the planet sh is shaped a hundred years from now and we're doing that now i mean we are there is a, an article that came out the other day there's a million species that are on the verge of extinction. We are yeah. driving all these other species to extinction. We're warming the, the planet. So this is, humans are the, the determining factor in many ways for how this planet plays out. And that's why in my mind, everything comes back to values. We, you're right. We have this, this lizard nature, this, this monkey nature. It's, it's who we are. And that's, I mean, you wouldn't want to take that away because that's the core of, of, of what we are. And yet we're also a species that has created philosophy. We've created beautiful religions mm -hmm. and traditions and art. And the question is, which version of us is going to lead us into the future? If it's this you know, tribal primate with these urges, like that's really frightening. If we can say, you know, we've done better and worse in history, and we had this terrible Second World War, and yet at the end of the Second World War with American leadership, the world came together. We established a United Nations. We established these concepts of human rights. Like you can't just kill everybody in your own country and say, hey, it's, it's just my business. So we have this capability, but it's always a struggle. I mean, these, these forces are always at, at war with each other in many ways. It's just 
too much to think about. Yeah, but we have to. I know, we do have to. And one of the things that's always been amusing to me is that we seem to have this insatiable desire to improve things. Yeah. And I've always wondered why. Like, But is that maybe because this is what human beings are here for? Yeah. It's what we do. Yeah. It's who we are. Right. Yeah. But is this a product of just a... Uh, us being intelligent, trying to survive against nature and predators and weather and all the all the different issues that we came up, that we evolved growing up and dealing with, right. and then now we just want things to be better. We just want things to be more convenient, faster, but yeah. more data. 